Hello, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the Blessed Messages for You channel. Before we begin today's message, I'd like to ask for your help in growing this ministry. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please click the subscribe button right now. Also, don't forget to leave a like and share this video with friends and family. Your comments are very important to us, so don't hesitate to leave your thoughts below. Now let's dive into God's Word. Today, we're going to explore one of the most touching and profound parables in Scripture, the story of the prodigal son. This narrative, found in the Gospel of Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 32, is a powerful testimony of God's unconditional love and the transformative nature of forgiveness. Imagine with me, a loving father, two sons, and a decision that would change their lives forever. This story is not just an ancient tale, but a mirror of our own spiritual journeys, full of lessons that resonate deeply in our hearts to this day. Let's begin our journey, examining every aspect of this extraordinary parable. Prepare your heart, for the message Jesus brings us through this story has the power to transform lives and renew hopes. The younger son, restless and eager to experience the world beyond the limits of his home, approaches his father with a surprising request. He demands his share of the inheritance, essentially declaring that he prefers his father's wealth to his presence and wisdom. Imagine the pain in that father's heart upon hearing such a request. It's as if the son were saying, Father, I'd rather you were dead, because all I want are your possessions. Surprisingly, the father in the parable doesn't reject his son's request. With a broken heart, but respecting his son's free will, he divides the property between the two sons. This action of the father reflects how God treats us. He gives us the freedom to make our choices, even when those choices may take us away from him. The younger son, in possession of his inheritance, wastes no time. He gathers all his belongings and sets off for a distant land. The Bible tells us that he squandered his wealth in wild living. We can imagine the scene, a naive young man, full of riches, arriving in an unknown city, ready to experience everything the world has to offer. This part of the story reminds us of how easily we can be seduced by the empty promises of the world. The Apostle John warns us in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. The prodigal son was living the dream, or so he thought. Parties, new friends, exciting experiences. He probably felt free, finally away from his father's control. But as often happens when we move away from God, this freedom was just an illusion. Soon, reality began to set in. The money, which seemed endless, began to run out. The friends, who were so numerous in times of abundance, disappeared when resources were exhausted. And then, as if the situation couldn't get worse, there was a severe famine in that whole country. But it's in this moment of absolute despair that something wonderful happens. The Bible tells us that the son came to his senses. This phrase is deeply significant. It suggests a moment of clarity, an awakening to the reality of his situation. In this moment of lucidity, he remembers his father's kindness. He remembers how even his father's hired servants had food to spare while he was starving to death. And then, he makes a decision that will change the course of his life. He decided to go back home. This decision to return is a beautiful example of repentance. And then, he makes a decision that will change the course of his life. He decided to go back home. This decision to return is a beautiful example of repentance. Repentance is not just feeling bad about what we've done, but it's a change of mind and direction. It's recognizing that we were going the wrong way and deciding to turn back to God. The prodigal son not only decides to return, but he prepares a confession speech. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. 
I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. He acknowledges his guilt, doesn't try to justify his actions, and is willing to accept a servant's position in his father's house. This attitude of humility and repentance is exactly what God looks for in us when we stray from him. As Psalm 51 verse 17 says, My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. Now, we come to the crucial point of the story, the moment that reveals the Father's heart, and by extension, God's heart. The Bible tells us, But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. This scene is breathtaking. The father, who represents God in our parable, is not sitting at home, bitter and resentful. He's not waiting to reprimand his rebellious son. No, he's watching, waiting, longing for the return of his lost son. And when he sees his son in the distance, he doesn't wait for the son to come to him. He runs. In the culture of the time, it was considered undignified for a respectable man to run. But this father's love overcomes any consideration of dignity or decorum. He runs to meet his son, embraces him, and kisses him. This powerful image shows us God's heart towards us. No matter how far we've gone, no matter how much we've sinned, God is always waiting, always ready to receive us back with love and joy. As Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 to 23 say, Because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. But Jesus adds another element to the parable, the older son. When the older son returns from the field and hears the music and dancing, he's confused. Upon discovering that his brother has returned and that his father is throwing a party to celebrate, he becomes furious. He refuses to join the celebration. The father, once again demonstrating his tireless love, goes out to plead with the older son to join the celebration. But the older son responds with bitterness. Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. The father responds to the older son with love and gentleness. My son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. As we conclude our reflection on this wonderful parable, we are challenged to examine our own hearts. Which character in this story do we identify with the most? Perhaps we're like the younger son, having strayed from God, experiencing the painful consequences of our choices. If this is the case, the message for us is clear. No matter how far we've gone, the Father is waiting with open arms to receive us back. All we need to do is come to our senses, recognize our need for God, and return to Him with a repentant heart. Or maybe we identify more with the older son, fulfilling our religious duties, but with a heart full of resentment and self-righteousness. If this is the case, we are challenged to examine our attitude towards God's grace. We are called to rejoice when others are restored, to celebrate God's love and mercy, even when it challenges our sense of justice. And of course, we are all called to reflect the heart of the Father in this story, the heart of God. We are called to love unconditionally, to forgive generously, to actively seek reconciliation with those who are lost. May we, like the Apostle Paul, fully embrace this truth. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Dear brothers and sisters, may the story of the prodigal son not just be a parable we hear, but a reality we live. May we daily experience the Father's unconditional love, whether in moments when we feel lost and in need of His grace, or in moments when we are called to extend that same grace to others. 
Remember, God's heart is always open to receive us. As the prophet Joel says, Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Joel 2.13 this parable teaches us that genuine repentance always leads to restoration. God not only forgives us, but He restores us completely. He gives us a new identity, a new purpose, a new life in Christ. As the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Reflect for a moment. Are there areas in your life where you need to experience this restoration? Are there broken relationships that need to be reconciled? Are there sins you need to repent of? Remember, no matter how far you've gone, the Father is waiting to receive you back. And for those of us who have already experienced this wonderful grace, we are called to be ambassadors of this reconciliation. As 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20 says, all this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. What a wonderful challenge! We are called not only to receive God's love and forgiveness, but to extend that same love and forgiveness to others. We are called to be like the Father in the parable, always vigilant, always ready to run to meet those who are returning to God. Imagine the impact we could have on our families, our communities, our world, if we fully lived out this truth. If we were known not for our judgment or condemnation, but for our love and compassion. If, like the Father in the parable, we were always ready to forgive, always eager to restore. The story of the prodigal son reminds us that God's heart is a heart of celebration. He rejoices when the lost are found, when the dead come back to life. As Luke 15.10 says, In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. May we be a people who join in this heavenly celebration. May we be those who bring the message of hope and restoration to a broken and needy world. May we be the hands and feet of Christ, reaching out to the lost, embracing the broken, celebrating the restored. And remember, no matter where you are in your spiritual journey, whether you're the prodigal son returning home, the older son struggling with resentment, or the father patiently waiting, God has a word for you today. He loves you unconditionally. He forgives you completely. He restores you totally. May we all experience the depth of the Father's love, the breadth of His grace, and the joy of His celebration. May we live our lives as a response to this wonderful love, extending to others the same grace we have received. Dear brothers and sisters, as we conclude our reflection on this powerful parable, I would like to leave you with the words of the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 3, 17-19, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. May the love of the Father revealed so beautifully in the parable of the prodigal son, be a living reality in our lives. May we live each day in the certainty of that love, in the joy of that forgiveness, and in the mission of sharing this good news with the world around us. Before we say goodbye, I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to reflect with me on this rich parable. If this message touched your heart in any way, please don't hesitate to share it with others who might be blessed by it. Remember to subscribe to our Blessed Messages for You channel to receive more biblical reflections like this one. Your support helps us continue to bring God's Word to more people.
Leave a like on this video if it was meaningful to you and share your thoughts in the comments below. Your perspectives and experiences can be a blessing to other members of our community. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Until the next video, stay in God's peace and love.